Thank you for the opportunity to discuss climate and energy and the significance of the Keystone Pipeline. My first chart shows the carbon content of conventional oil, gas, and coal and the unconventional fossil fuels, including tar sands. The purple portions have been burned already. The science is crystal clear. If we want to avoid leaving young people a climate system that's spiraling out of their control, the additional fuel burned must be less than that already burned. That means we must phase out coal burning and leave most of the unconventional fossil fuels in the ground. Tar sands are among the dirtiest and most carbon intensive fuels. It makes no sense to set up a system to exploit them in a major way. My second chart <coughs> shows that China is now the largest emitter, emitter of carbon dioxide, the pie chart on the left. However, it is the cumulative emissions that drive climate change, the pie chart on the right. The United States is by far the largest emitter. We have burned our fair share of the carbon budget and some of China's and India's. We are all on the same boat. We will either sink together or find a way to sail together. My next chart shows that fossil fuels provide over 85 percent of our energy. Non-hydro renewables provide only 3 percent of our energy in the U.S. and in the world. So how can we possibly phase down carbon emissions? My next chart shows the two things that we can do. We can reduce our energy intensity and we can reduce the carbon intensity of the energy. We have been reducing the energy intensity, the amount of energy per GDP, improving efficiency, and appropriate policies can further improve that. However, the principal requirement is to reduce the carbon intensity. Over the next few decades, we must drive the carbon intensity down near zero. There is one country that has done a good job, Sweden. Sweden has decarbonized its electricity, which is provided by nuclear power and hydropower. They have one more big step to make, to make liquid fuels from electricity. That's actually not difficult, but they are a small country and have not developed that industry. Why is the rest of the world not driving carbon intensity down? It is because fossil fuels appear to the consumer to be the cheapest energy. Fossil fuels are not really the cheapest energy. They are not required to pay for the human health costs of air pollution and water pollution or for the costs of climate change. The public picks up the tab. So the required policy is to put a gradually rising fee on carbon collected from fossil fuel companies at the first domestic sale at the domestic mine or port of entry. And 100 percent of the money should be distributed to the public equal amounts to all legal residents. So the person who does better than average in limiting his carbon footprint will make money. This will provide a huge incentive for individuals and a huge incentive for entrepreneurs and business people. It will spur our economy, make it more efficient, and it will modernize our infrastructure and create hundreds of times more jobs than building a pipeline to transport the dirtiest fuel on Earth. With a, free, a fee of $10 per ton of CO2 rising $10 each year, after 10 years it will reduce our fossil fuel use almost 30 percent, according to 
uh, simulation, economic simulations by the Carbon Tax Center. It will reduce our oil use in 10 y years three times more than the volume of the Keystone Pipeline. George Schultz and conservative economists, in, fa in fact most economists, agree that a rising revenue neutral carbon fee is the way to, si to solve the climate and the energy problems. In fact, it's an opportunity to make our economy more efficient. An important point is that such legislation, I think, needs to be introduced by conservatives because I'm afraid liberals will try to take part of the money to make the government bigger. Not one dime should go to the government. 100% should go to the public. Now, I, I, I've... Uh, I would like to enter in the record a specific one-page description of this fee and dividend, which is written uh, by Jim Miller, a Boston businessman. Uh, and he gave me a copy yesterday. I think it's a nice, uh, simple summary of a fee and dividend system. Now, one uh, final comment that I would like to make. It is crucial that we begin to work with China to solve both their air pollution problem and their carbon emission problem. China is now contemplating and making plans for a massive coal gasification uh, operation, hundreds of times bigger than copied to some degree on the coal gasification plant in the Midwest that Jimmy Carter started, but on a massive scale. We can't, if that happens, it will be very difficult, if not impossible, for our children to control climate change. So we need to work with them and, and work with them on clean energies, including uh, nuclear power, where we still have the best capabilities. We ha with our university system and our free enterprise system, we should work with them and help them get clean energy because it's in our benefit as well as theirs. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Harbert. 